back in March, I wrote a blog post about uh, a way of kind of detecting if I was at home. And it's quite a simple thing, but just having that ability to know if I'm in the at home to then feed into other projects other devices so if the lighting could turn off or heating could kind of go into standby mode that kind of thing so um back in this post i um i talked about a few methods kind of tagging in and out of the rfid and then moved on to bluetooth and i'd experimented with a kind of traditional bluetooth and establishing a serial link but it's connecting to my phone and that that didn't work as kind of planned um, I uh, kind of came across this device it's uh, basically a Bluetooth low energy Bluetooth 4.0 and this is a kind of a breakout adapter board right kind of Red Bear Labs and so I kind of I bought one of these just to have a, a play around with and it's meant to or it's kind of by default it comes with a system so you can talk um, so you can kind of connect your phone to this device and interact with um, uh, kind of sensors and other things on here. So sending data from a phone or an app to this device. But also listed on the product page, there's another mode you can put it into and you kind of update the firmware, which is basically just drag and drop, you plug it into the computer and you copy over this new firmware and it behaves very differently. It becomes, I think, a, a master device or whatever the equivalent terminology is. And so you can tell it to scan for nearby devices. And so I was playing around with this and I was hoping to get it to detect my phone. Um, it didn't do that, but I was kind of very pleasantly surprised to find it picks up my Fitbit, the kind of uh, wristbands I'm kind of wearing all the time. And uh, which is fantastic. It means this, uh, the, the Fitbit is always with me. It's always kind of on me at all times so it's a very very good indicator of where I am and um, the app is a little bit poor at notifying me about low battery issues but that's a uh, nothing I can really do about that so I did some experimenting with this and connected up just to an Arduino simple circuit to um, tell this device to go into scanning mode came back with a list of MAC addresses of all the devices picked up and you kind of pass through those scan and cross reference to my known device and it worked reasonably well. Um, rain wasn't fantastic, it was a bit iffy, but um, it was working quite well and I've had a prototype kind of um, kind of at home for a while now and this data is then feeding to a kind of a sensor network project I've been working on and it's pretty reliable. Um, past weeks so I've decided just to kind of bring this project to conclusion and finish it off and so I've um, cut a, a pair of these boxes because that was the other thing the the range of it's a little limited i tried um, taking kind of 10 readings and looking for any positive within that it helped a little bit but it's not perfect so if there's at one end of the flat it just did not pick me up or if i was standing in an odd position it wouldn't work um, so i've come to the conclusion i needed two devices two scanners basically uh, two proximity detection things one at either end of the place and then those two kind of outputs would be awed together to get the, the overall value of whether I'm at home or not. And so I've, uh, like I said, I've had one running. I printed up or I can laser cut a little enclosure for it. And I finally got the parts this evening to kind of quickly knock together another one. Thankfully, it's a very straightforward uh, system. So you've got the Red Bear Labs uh, Bluetooth kind of breakout board at the back there. It connects to an Arduino kind of uh, Pro Mini. Um, and then you've got an NRF24 LO1 plus uh, wireless module. So this then sends the data on. Um, and also at the bottom here is a little kind of circuit board I've been working on recently. Um, trying to, I, I kind of like to use uh, um, just a USB kind of mini connection or micro connection, sorry, for uh, power. Because it's cheap, readily available. You've certainly got some around the house and just need a, a kind of mobile phone power supply and cable. Um, but the connectors themselves are tiny. I'm just going to focus. The pins on the back are particularly uh, annoying. They are close to impossible to solder because they're position and orientation. Um, so because of that, I've uh, knocked up a couple of these recently. Um, it's literally just a 3.3 volt regulator on here, socket, and um, uh, kind of LED and a few outputs. And these kind of slot 
kind of push into a little hole or whatever you want in a project box and just put a bit of glue in this case and it's a fantastic thing I've used these a few times now and probably end up listing these on Tindy when I finalize the design um, so that aside this is a um, it's clearly a prototype device, but I only ever need two of these or very, very small quantities. So I'm not gonna bother doing any kind of custom boards for this. Um, this works well. Um, so at the moment, I have the system scanning every 20 seconds. It issues a scan request. It takes approximately 10 seconds for this device to come back with a result. And then when it, I do get a result and the 20 seconds is up, it sends out a data packet over um, kind of network and so I'm working with a few kind of sensor boards at the moment which transmit sensor data and through to a central hub device and so this is just using the same thing just a different type of data packet and that hub then kind of keeps track of the two devices and I kind of know if I'm at home or not based on that the idea being that could then potentially relay its data back out to devices that were interested in knowing that and so this side of things is uh, kind of pretty much come to a conclusion. I'm hoping my plan to put one at either end of the flat works. Um, because I've just constructed this, I haven't fully tested uh, this idea yet, but um, the first device is up and running and fitted. And this one, kind of uh, boxing that up and plugging it in elsewhere and kind of see how it functions. And with any luck, if it, I can give it a bit of time, see how reliable it is, and I can start using this data to feed into other projects. Uh, the first thing I've got in mind is the bed lighting project, which I did a while back. I was meant to use a motion sensor to detect if anyone was around to dim the lights, but that problems with that. So with any luck, I can feed the data back into there to get it to turn down based on whether I'm definitely here or not, based on the presence of the Fitbit.